G'day gamers, Ranger Tony here with another 7 days to die simple starter base build video. So I have seen a couple of videos by another Aussie YouTuber, Ja Woodle, and he has done some interesting things and I thought I would take that and just tweak it a little bit and produce a, a similar sort of base to a couple of things that he's done and just sort of point out some things that could be done slightly differently uh, and things like that. So let's go in and have a look at this new base. Okay, we are back and we are in the lovely forest biome uh, by the lake uh, in the west of the main map, if you're familiar with that area. Now, here is my lovely base. This is a AFK base um, and it is it is very much a a horde avoidance base. The whole idea here is um, so if we take my pillbox base for example base works very very well you give the zombies one area to focus on they come at you only from that one direction and you can concentrate all of your effort to protect yourself from that one direction and that works really really well the problem is is that you need a lot of ammunition for your turrets and for yourself um, and as the game progresses if for example you want to craft better turrets things like the shotgun turret and the auto smg turret you have to level up the turret skill and when you do that it actually makes your junk turrets fire faster so you end up running out of ammunition for your junk turrets even sooner um, and so you spend a lot of time managing and juggling uh, the reloading of junk turrets and stuff like that if you want to save your ammunition then any situation you can put yourself in where the zombies cannot get to you you can actually ride out the horde and if you don't kill any of them none more will spawn so you can end up with a situation where you have it's usually about eight but it might be you know a few more than that uh but you have a bunch of zombies down in this pit and if you leave them down there and don't attack them until the next morning and then you come out and shoot them all, you can survive the horde with very few resources. Now, it's a controversial idea because not everyone wants to do that. They say, well, you know, this game is horde survival. I would rather do that. And that's fine. But there are times when if I'm running low on ammunition um, and a horde knight is coming up, what are my options? It's either, you know, wait to die or find some way that I can cheese the game that I don't have to uh, provoke the horde, I don't have to defend against the horde, uh, kill the zombies in the morning when they're not as feral and they're a little bit easier to kill and you've used very little ammunition um, and basically in this situation you're shooting fish in a barrel. So how does this work? So this is very similar to Ja Woodle's floating base. Um, the zombies will path to uh, anywhere along the edge of this pit, they consider this to actually be a um, a valid uh, path to the base because not only do I have these blocks here which are um, tiles right up to the edge of the base, but you'll notice I actually have to go down quite a way here before I can actually place a block. And that's because most of the gap that you see in here is actually taken up by parts of blocks so it considers that that's all solid ground as far as the zombie is concerned so they will just happily walk over like that and slide straight down into the bottom and then once they are down here they cannot get out you can if you sprint up here you can get out of that quite easily but they can't so i have a simple little hatch here to let me into my vault door and then in here now you can if you want put a hole in there and throw molotovs down into the pit uh, and attack them uh, while they're down there or you can just leave them there and come out when you're ready 
and shoot them like the fish in the barrel that they are. Um, I don't like using the trapdoor with the Molotovs for two reasons. One, Molotovs are annoyingly fragile. And if you're not 100% on with your aim, you will burn yourself. And I tend to do that nine times out of 10. Uh, so I don't like them for that reason. You can't throw them through bars, so you can't put bars at the bottom there. Um, and the reason why that's important is, is then the next problem is, is that you slip and fall into the hole and end up in the bottom there with all of the zombies. So I have built it with bars that I could shoot down through, but um, I this current build, I don't have anything. And that is the way I've got it, and it works well. Um, standard generator and battery bank here with lights. And then there's this lovely little switch here. Oh, I should mention there's a second level on this. I would not build this any higher. I have tried and it collapses. It cannot take the weight on the split blocks that you're using around the edges to keep everything up. Um, and so if you go any higher than this that I have built, uh, you risk falling in. Um, you can build this top section out of anything that you want, but I recommend lighter materials. This is all concrete at the moment. Uh, some of it is reinforced, some of it is not. I think the ceiling is uh, plates of flagstone. Uh, it's not full blocks, that's why there's the, the sort of gap in here. It seems like it's got a higher roof than it really does. Um, but I probably should have made all of the upper part of this out of wood. Uh, it wouldn't have needed to have been anything higher than that. The zombies don't get close enough to be able to do much damage, and if they do, you can repair it quite easily. So this is my little work area up here, forge, workbench, chemistry station, storage. Uh, I used to have a cement mixer up there, but I, uh, I took it down at one point. Um, and a fireplace, uh, a light up here, and bars all around so I can see out. But when you're in a battle, you spend all of your time down here with the door closed. Um, that way you are not getting attacked by um, police um, and the vultures can't fly in and get to you. Uh, and you're really not, they know you're here, they'll charge at you, but they will always fall in. And when you're defending, you want that, if you're gonna use that, you don't have to, you could jump that gap. Um, but if you don't want to take the chance of occasionally missing and slipping, um, I find it useful to have the uh, hatch there. When you're defending your base, though, you put the hatch up, and that way they can't come and knock on the door. They will just slip through. Um, so as I showed you, uh, with this up or down, you'll just slip straight through there. Now, what have I done to improve this? Well, for a start, um, the mechanic of building this top level and the way it interacts with the side walls. I'll explain that in a little bit later, um, but I've done slightly different from what Jar Woodle did there. Um, not that he did anything wrong, um, but I'll explain the differences in there in a minute. I like aesthetically the look of what I've got here. I've got sort of a rounded uh, sort of spheroid look to that. I think it's got a, quite a, a sort of artistic look to it, but I'm certainly no artist. Um, it's only six blocks deep, so you don't have to spend a huge amount of time digging this out. Uh, I have made a start on digging this out in a, another playthrough that wasn't using um, the uh, cheat mode, um, and I got quite a lot of it done in a couple of days. I, I think I probably could do it in about three days, dig all this out, and that's with stone shovel and a stone ax, um, because you'll get the la half of it, uh, three or four levels will be uh, dirt, and then you'll have at least two or three levels of stone in, at least in the forest biome where I am. So what I've done differently down the bottom is two things. One, I have all of these dart traps around the edges. So they are the second trigger, the second switch that I have in here. And of course you can't see it at the moment because I got rid of uh, anything to allow me to look down there. 
But if I turn that on, it turns on all of those traps. Mm, I don't want to go down there. Uh, it turns on all of those traps. And so any zombies that are down there on the ground are going to get shot from nine, uh, well, four different angles, uh, 12 different traps all up. Uh, yes, it, you will go through a lot of um, of ammunition for that, but you know I think it's pretty good. Uh, what are the the pit? What are the uh, campfires for? Well, Jao Whittle did another video talking about the use of campfires in traps, and he built a a, a sloping wall going up from the ground and put fires all the way around. I tend to feel the fires concentrated in a small area in the bottom of the pit works a little bit better. It doesn't necessarily kill the zombies any quicker, but if you're waiting out a horde and you don't want to attack and you want something passively to over time destroy any zombies that fall in your pit, in your pit, you know, it's only nine fires. Uh, a hundred wood in each of those fires would last the length of a horde without a problem and you could just light them all before the horde come up in here close your door and just wait and let them all die now you're not going to get experience for those kills but you're also not going to get experience from the dart traps either so that is you know the payoff that you have to take now the other thing he was talking in you know, was talking in his video about the use of uh, grenades or uh, Molotov cocktails where you would put them on a trap door open the trap door and the trap door dumps them down a ramp to where the bunch of zombies are where they all explode or burst into fire or whatever and yes I think that's a good idea but what I would like instead is something like the dart trap that shoots out flame a flamethrower and it might shoot you know two three four or five blocks long of flame that would be really nice because down here then i could have flame shooting out rather than the darts um and have it work that flame then works similar to the molotov cocktail in that once they get lit on fire they stay on fire and they burn very quickly as opposed to when they walk on these fires you don't burn very quickly at all because what you could then do is you could stand up here and you know you've got a, a pit full of zombies down there. You could turn on the trap, wait, say, five seconds as you hear this rush of flame and you're pretty sure that all of your zombies are then on fire and then turn the, turn the, the switch back off again and listen to see if they're all dead or dying. You know, wait 30 seconds once... If there's still a lot of noise and you think they turn it on for another five seconds turn it off you're not having to use a huge amount of fuel um, it would work really really well so if the devs are watching that is something i would like to see in the game and i i am considering working on some mods myself and that's a mod that i wouldn't mind building is some sort of flamethrower trap um Let's talk about building this. I am going to do an actual build video where I explain how to build this and, and the, the step that I go. Now, when Jar Woodle built it, he built out, and this is a, so the bottom down there is three by three. It goes up, it comes, it expands out one block for every two levels it comes up, and it comes up six. So by the time it gets up here, you're seven by seven, which means this gap here is nine by nine. And so the, the edge of this, 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 board, this first level of border here is 11 by 11. And I decided to put an extra one around it and then extend it out front a little bit to go to this edge of this road. But if you marked out with plates an 11 by 11 square and then started digging down, you could, you could build this. And that's what I basically do. Um, as I said, Ja Woodle started by cutting out his five by five or seven by seven uh, space that he used, cut that out first, sunk his floor down into the ground, then went one space out from the edge of that, and or once dug a one space pit around that, and then went one extra space out and built his edge. Um, 
I recommend actually digging all of the pit first and then putting this in. I felt that worked a little bit better for me rather than trying to put the base in and dig around it and still keep it all working. Now, how does this stuff all work? Well, it's the, it's the, the steep inclined blocks that works really well here. Now, what Ja Woodle was attempting to do with his base build was have the steep incline like this, and he had his base inclined this way. And he, at first he found that didn't work, and, if, and that's actually uh, not that surprising because the gap doesn't look all that big there, and you do, you get stuck in it. And so I, I'm, I'm actively trying to go down that, and it's only when I fall out the side that I can get out of that. So if you build a pit like that, they're never going to get down. They're going to get stuck up against the wall because this is, this here is the outside of the pit. That there is your base. And that, you know, so you'd have, say, a door there. So the, what he then built was this, where he had his sloped, his sharp inclined wedge at the top, and then he had a gap. And actually, he built his very deep. It was 10 deep, and then he built the slope up from the bottom. Um, and so that does work. With the slope coming down that way to meet that slope there, what actually, because there's never anything underneath here, this is always empty over here until you get to the other wall. So this actually does work because what actually happens is, is you do a bit of a pinball here. You, you notice that when I do this, I go forward, then I get bumped back, and then I come forward again. So I come in here, I bounce against that, and it pushes me back, but it pushes me back underneath the lip of this, which then allows me to fall down onto this and come forward again. So that, that does work. I have a couple of solutions for that. So these are basically the same sorts of towers. Um, there's a couple of ways that you can build this that will work just as well, if not better, than the solution that Ja Woodle did. So my solution I'll talk about in a sec, but there is another one. So if you want to, rather than start your slope right at the top, what you can actually do is if you switch to using the flagstone plates, they are incredibly thin, but all of that extra space that you see there is still considered part of the block. So if I go and I say on face, that now puts that flat up against that. Now, if I, oh, sorry, if I now rotate this block here, around to be on the opposite face, I can place that block, as you can see, let me come over this way a little bit, I can place that block right there. And that is perfectly valid, as far as the game is considered, that works, that is all connected. And as far as the zombies are concerned, there is no gap in between all of that. If I now put a solid flagstone block there, and that represents the floor of the base, the zombies will come walking up here and they will think there's no gap here and they will just walk straight off the edge and fall straight through that gap. And there, that is a huge gap there for them to fall through. The problem with this is that that's a large gap for you to span as well. So you have to jump that or you have to put two, uh, two, iron, two hatches one after the other that you can walk across to get across that gap so that you don't fall through. Uh, the solution that I did over here was just ever so subtly different from what Ja Rule did. And as I said, he didn't do anything wrong in the way that he built his. He tried to put another block right there like that. All right, and as we saw, that doesn't work. You get stuck in there, that gap is not big enough for you to get through. All I did when I changed it up was to match the slope there so that now both faces of this and this 
are sloping in the same direction. And now it doesn't it doesn't have a problem at all with that. And so that's now the floor of your base. And then what I did up top so I can step through that and I just fall through. In fact, I don't even have to actively walk forward. Once I get to a certain point, I'm at a point of no return and I will just fall through that. So right there. Okay, I have stopped a little bit. But if I keep walking, I go straight through it. All right. That's exactly what I've got in my base over there. Um, and what that cosmetically, because you know, you've got, see how you've got that tiny little block in, bit of block in front? Cosmetically, how I built that into my build then was to go and use the flagstone wedges and put that forward there like that. So from the side, that extends the slope up. And then on top of that goes a full block as part of the wall All right. and any zombie that walks into that just slips straight through so yeah that's just a quick little uh, a little video a little explanation of a my base it's not perfect it's it's probably not going to work very well against demolishers i don't know how the dart trap will work against them you have no problems with um with police spitting at you you're in a safe little spot vultures can't get at you um spiders and screamers and stuff can't get at you uh, they all just fall down into the bottom of the pit and then it's your decision what you do with them when they're in the bottom of the pit. You can have a bunch of fires down there and light them all up. You can have a bunch of dart traps shooting at them. You could even put, um, you know, turrets down there or uh, shotgun turrets, semi-auto turrets, all that sort of stuff. You could put all of those down there and they could, they could blast away as well. Um, the only, the only disadvantage with having any of those traps down there is it does tend to encourage the zombies to bash at the walls to try and get to those traps. Um, without them, they just try and climb out and they do very little damage. Um, but with all of that as concrete or higher, um, it takes a lot for them to break through and do anything significant. And even if they break through the wall, they're not going anywhere. They're not getting out. Breaking any of that slope doesn't help them get up the slope and out. All it does is allow them to dig into the dirt. Um, and generally, they don't dig up uh, very much unless, you know, there's a directly above them a, a, a dirt block that they can claw into. They don't tend to go up very much. So um, you are pretty well safe from them. They technically, they if they were if they wanted to, they could stand right here and punch at the wall but they don't because you are further inside you're right in the middle you know you're standing in here they want to get to you so they just run straight towards you and if you know any option that they've got is going to take them down here so i hope you enjoyed this tour of another starter a, another simple starter base that uh, you can use it's a couple of days work to dig out the tunnel and the rest of the build of this you can start with flagstone for the base for the base level for, for maybe those first two courses and the rest of that you could do as wood um, you would need flagstone for those last little bits if you want to do the same sort of sloping as I've got, or you will need a circular saw to cut, um, though, to create those uh, angled blocks, those those steep wedges. Um, and you can really upgrade it at your leisure. If you are going to upgrade it all to cobblestone and then to cement and then reinforced cement, um, I recommend being very careful 
Uh, even when you even when you reinforce the pit, be very careful at this top course right here. Okay, uh, let me just make it a little bit easier to see. If I take that off, so that that row there, all the way, that's basically the, that's ground. That's the same level as this here, all right? All the way around. That's the first level of dirt that you would have dug through. That le that block all the way around. I actually recommend reinforcing that in stages. Don't do the entire ring all the way around at once because what you're gonna do is you're going to have an entire section that is, particularly when you go from cobblestone to concrete, the wet concrete blocks are not as strong as the dry concrete blocks, right? And so it might not be able to hold the load of the entire weight of your base because you've got to remember the entire weight of your base is this block here sticking to, in this case, that little corner block there, those two blocks are essentially connected as far as the game is concerned, right? And so all the way around, all of the blocks in that level are connected to all of the blocks in this level, all the way around the base. And if the adhesion between those two blocks changes too much, the base could collapse on you. And I have had it happen. Uh, I was in the process of upgrading actually this exact base. This is, it. half the base broke on me. I went off and did some foraging and came back and half the base was gone. And it was because I upgraded a huge amount of the, of the stuff from cobblestone to cement. And because it was all wet cement, it couldn't handle the load and it all just cracked. I think what happened was some of the blocks changed from wet cement to dry cement that changed the structural forces and it recalculated the force over everything and went oh this one spot here there's no that's too much force now for for what's happening and it all just and half the base disappeared um so i had to rebuild a lot of it and when i did i then progressively went around and very carefully i did like two blocks at a time in this row and two blocks at a time in that row. And in each of those around all four sides, I made sure that there was only two blocks that were being upgraded at any one time and that they weren't opposite each other. That there was say one block here and another block there. And that I might've upgraded over here. I might've done say, hmm, why is it not undoing that? Oh, I might've, uh, say so done that one there and that one there because they don't match up with that one and that one all right so i made sure that the structural integrity overall of that entire section of flooring was as strong as possible by doing all the upgrades in, in stages um so i definitely recommend that i'll talk more on that in the build video that i do for this but I thought I'd point that out just in this if you try and, and build this in before you see my full build video. And I hope my explanations of, of the ways that you can do things here was informative. Um, you know, I may, I'm, you know if, I do, if I do this build again, I might even consider using this method uh, rather than this one. Both of them will work. I don't know whether this one is any weaker than this as far as the game is concerned i think the structural integrity between those two blocks is exactly the same as it is between those two blocks as technically it is between that plate and the block next to it so um it's it's just the further you go that way the more load you're putting on the entire system if it's unsupported so that's why you don't want to build this base too big I probably wouldn't go much bigger than this. You might be able to go just a little bit bigger. So for example, you might be able to drop that pit down to two more levels, which means expand everything here out one more so that rather than that being seven blocks wide, it's nine and the gap here is 11 and the border is 13. 
which would give you much more space internally. It, it always seems like it's like three times the space internally. But um, I really am not sure if it would take that stress. And in fact, you might not be able to build a second level. You might have to leave it all on the first level, in which case you might just make this your horde base and not your day-to-day -day base. So you might not put any of the stuff that I've got upstairs in there. You might have a little bit of storage and that might be it, you know, a few supplies, but you might not, and you might have a bedroll and you might have your, a cook fire or something, but you might not have the chemistry bench and all that type of stuff. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please give me a like and share it with your friends. Be sure to subscribe to keep up to date with all of the latest videos, and I will see you for the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye.